So um, welcome again to our um, next session in our computational thinking course. We're very excited this evening to have um, Gayatri Shandar with us. She is a student at Interlake High School here in Bellevue, and she's a senior in the gifted program at Interlake. And she began her computer science, she began in computer science after attending the Girls Who Code summer immersion program at Amazon in Seattle. And since then, she's begun her own after school coding program at her local middle school. And she's assumed leadership of a district wide maker initiative. And she's also been pursuing research. She's currently an intern at the Muscular Skeletal Systems Biology Lab with University of Washington's Medicine's Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Department. And in her junior year, she was named a Washington Affiliate Award winner of the Aspirations in Computing Award from the National Center for Women in Information Technology for her research and her educational work. And most recently, she was named a Hashtag Include Fellow, an initiative run by She++ challenging high school students to diversify CS education. So um, we welcome you, um, Gayatri, and we're so happy you could join us and really um, extend and broaden our conversation around computational thinking. And we're very excited because we believe it's really important to um, hear uh, from the student voice and the student perspective. So um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, one thing, you know, we, we have a series of questions that we'd love to ask you and um, participants on the call, please feel free to uh, engage in the chat window and any questions you have or comments, um, we want it to be a conversation um, that way. So st to start off, uh, what really has appealed to you about computer science? Yeah, I think, I think what kind of sold me into computer science was that it was something that combined my my love for math and um, logic and objectivity um, with you know my love my my other love for you know the arts um, English uh, stuff like that and I thought um, and computer science was really the only place where both of those could happen at the same time and I could pursue both of those interests and what I really like about computer science on a day to day basis is the logic of it, the practicing the puzzles, and um, really going through the algorithmic, th algorithmic thinking every day. Um, and I think that's what sold me into computer science. Uh, how would you explain the term computational thinking? Um, I would counter that with another term. I would say it's like algorithmic thinking. It's like thinking in algorithms. And all that means, I think, is being able to think systematically and to be able to uh, consider a wide var variety of scenarios when coming up with a solution. Uh, the cool thing about computer science is that you're basically on a quest to make things the most efficient, um, as, as efficient as they can be. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to be in the form of code. It can be really in your problem solving, in your when you're doing repeated processes, how are you going to make that the most efficient that it can be. Um, and that's how I would view computational thinking. You want to be able to think in a series of steps, and you want to be able to minimize the amount of effort that you put into each step so that you can just streamline whatever you do. What do you see that teachers do uh, that engage kids and really help them participate in computer science? So, um, especially because I started computer science with Girls Who Code, I've always been kind of aware of how teachers um, treat students uh, when they're teaching computer science or when they're teaching any subject. Um, there's definitely, um, I definitely see the best, the teachers that are best at encouraging computer science treat their treat both their boys and their girls with an equal amount of confidence going in um, and an equal amount of um, assurance that both um, both genders or all genders can solve a certain problem or complete a certain challenge. And I think that is a characteristic I see in teachers who are really good at promoting computer science. And I think um, the weird thing about computer science is that you're going to always come up with errors. And especially in computational thinking, 
no one can have all the answers. You're even in the easiest problems, someone's going to come up to you with a question that you might not be able to solve. But to constantly have the enthusiasm um, towards the subject, I think, is another characteristic that teachers who are get, bringing the most students into computer science have. So, can you tell a little bit? Of, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Girls Who Code and about that program. Yeah. So, Girls Who Code was an initiative started in. 2012 or 2013. Um, it started as one program in the summer, um, and they would accept 30 students from the New York area, and they would be in uh, big companies like um, Twitter, Amazon, Microsoft, and they would just learn how to code, but in the forum uh, or in the context of the industry. So they would they would um, receive mentorships from women who work um, in the software industry. That um, they would have speakers who come in, um, work, and women from all different kinds of backgrounds. Um, and they would, on a day-to-day -day basis, they would be taught by college students and TAs who are currently studying computer science. And it's five days a week, um, eight hours a day. Um, so basically, you have a 40-hour week. And for 40 hours, you, you're just doing, uh, you're just learning how to code. And more than learning you know, languages and skills itself, it teaches you, one, how to think, um, two, how to learn other um, computing languages easy, easier, but like three, I think the best part about it was it gives you the confidence to go into computer science. And I think that is really the key of going into any subject, but computer science especially, is to constantly have the confidence uh, that and the assurance that you can do it, um, even when you even when you reach the most impossible problems. And so that's Girls Who Code in a nutshell. They have year-long programs. They have Girls Who Code clubs. There's one at Interlake High School. There's, there's pretty much one anywhere you'd want it. Um, and those are run by high school, um, by high school students. Yeah. So what are you, so as an extension off of that, um, we mentioned in your bio that you're engaged in um, helping other kids uh, get interested in computer science. So what are you doing that helps engage kids and helps them participate in computer science? Mm -hmm. So currently my biggest initiative is running the coding, um, a coding program up at Highland. And um, I recently wrote a grant and it was approved um, and we're going to build uh, satellites over at Highland and we're going to be using Arduinos to um, collect data and send them up in the air. Um, which is going to be super cool. But I think, um, so the story actually goes, I actually wanted to make it a Girls Who Code Club at Highland because that was definitely something I didn't have in middle school, and I think that definitely kept me out of um, computer science, you know, not having an environment. So I originally started it as a Girls Who Code Club, but the paperwork didn't go through on time, and so I ended up opening up the club to everyone, which I'm very glad I did now. Um, and so, so now we have you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 to 30 um, kids come in, and we just do, we do things with, different things with computer science. Um, last week, we had a hack day where I just gave them a bunch of programming challenges, and um, they just had to go through them as fast as they can. Some days, I do a lesson and an activity, um, or some days, we um, were just doing an activity. Um, and I think, I think that really, Starting at the the younger you start, the better the better you're get the better yield you're going to get of kids in going into computer science because we're we're just less fragile mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're younger. So when things don't go well, you're not as discouraged um, all the time. And so that's that's the big thing that I do to try to get others into computer science. But I also run um, a maker initiative um, from Interlake where we organize hack days where we um, we write more grants to get Arduinos out into the school district. And so, yeah, those are some of the things that I've been doing. So what do you notice as a teacher of uh, and working with the students at Highland? What are some of the strategies you notice that you've used to engage those kids, encourage those kids? Like you've talked about how you know, there's some, it takes some specificity around that. I mean, just the fact that you've chosen to go to middle school, it's, um, you know, a school that represents a broader diversity as well as student population. So um, can you talk a little bit about maybe some of the moves or things that you do um, with the kids that you're teaching? 
Yeah, I've noticed the biggest thing that I've noticed, especially when um, getting people who aren't the typical boys that you'd see in computer science, is giving them very specific applications and goals that appeal to them. So something that, um, an example that I often give, um, that Girls Who Code often also gives too, is um, some, some girls for their final project in Girls Who Code were able to make an app that based on the weather outside, we can decide your outfit for you. If you catalog each of your each of your shirts, your pants, your um, your jackets, um, the app will put together an outfit for you based on the weather outside. And that was something that that was something that was very it's it's very doable, and you can see how that gets done. And I think that's what really attracted people um, into continuing to code the being able to see a cool application of it. Because um, most people understand why math is important. People understand why, you know, reading is important. But people are still trying to, um, especially at the younger level, people still don't know why computational thinking and computer science is essential. And once you give them very specific real-world applications like that, that actually um, convinces them. Um, another thing, of course, is just cool cool demonstrations and cool apps. Um Right at the at the middle school level, games are really popular. People really do like to be able to code games because that's what they're that's what they're interested. It's similar to what they it's similar to what they've seen, and it's very applicable to them. And I think those are the those are some of the moves I use to keep kids and get kids into com computer science. Great. Yeah. Um, we have a question that came up in the chat window from Jenny Hunter. She's a teacher up at. Um, Somerset Elementary, and she says, I'm wondering what experiences in elementary school helped to build confidence before group, before Girls with Code. Were there opportunities for computational thinking that laid the foundation for your interest in coding? Yeah, so I actually didn't attend elementary school um, in the Bellevue School District, but I can still, I can still answer this. Um, no, actually, I didn't have, we didn't have that many opportunities um, growing up for computational computational thinking, and I think that that's strange because we would have this uh, computer lab time. Uh, we would have computer lab time to work, but those didn't emphasize computational thinking. Those those in fact were you know times to play around with paint or different Apple products. And I think a better use of that time, especially if um, elementary students now are still doing computational thinking, a better use of that time would be Scratch, and I think um, that's what people are gravitating towards today. Um, so, no, there weren't a lot of opportunities for me to do computational thinking. Um, robotics didn't really start until later in my um, elementary career, and I, st I still didn't actually get into that. Um, yeah, so no, <laughs> long story short, no. Yeah, great. But it's way better now. Yeah, thank you. Um, another question that's come up is, have you considered ways in which you would like to see other high school subjects, such as science, math, language arts, social studies, integrate computer science and computational thinking? And if so, um, what might be some examples? Mm -hmm. Ways that I'd like to see high school subjects. Math, definitely. Um, calculus, calculus and computer science have so many applications together, um, just being able to just being able to understand um, the way the way calculus translates onto a graph is a very a very computer science um, topic. Um, English, I mean I there are certain ways that definitely English could apply. You can you can look for you can write programs to look for occurrences of certain symbols. Um, you can use um, machine learning. Um, there are totally ways that um, you can ha you can integrate those. For a specific example, uh, I'm at I'm at a loss right now, so I'll get, come back to that. Okay, great, thank you. Um, what do you see happening in classrooms that disengages students? Um, maybe what you've noticed among your peers, or thinking about what maybe doesn't draw them in or make they feel like they belong in the class or subject. And the reason I am asking that question is because as we think about in this K-8 space being really intentional and around this equity and access to engage girls and 
and traditionally students who have been traditionally marginalized within science and we extend that into computer science so like what are we want to become more aware of some of the um, things that sometimes maybe don't engage everyone um, so in my in my experience and in my opinion the number one thing that will deter a student from continuing computer science is the notion in their head that they are bad at it and that they are they're inherently bad at it and that they will never get better at it and I what I like to tell people who who say that to me is it took me it took me a year it took me more than a year to even get into computer science to know that this is the place for me and to know and to feel confident in my own skills um, and I think imposter syndrome in computer science is is super big um, and super important. So I think just being able when people when people when especially students say that kind of thing, it's really important to say no. Um, there are people who take years before they know that computer science is right for them. You weren't good at math on the first day. You weren't good at English on the first day. You need to give it the same amount of time that you gave other subjects. And in terms of in terms of equity. Um, really, the best way to solve equity is to, you know, for first you got you. Some people you're gonna have to strong arm into your classroom, and especially if they don't see themselves fitting, you're gonna have to say, hey, you fit. Please try this, and you got to be persistent, uh, persistent with that. And it, and I promise the persistence pays off. Um, people do. There are people who will stay back, and I think, um, especially from Highland, I think. They're doing a great job of bringing people who are historically underrepresented mm -hmm. in computer science, and I think that is a part, um, in part, to the teachers' persistence of bringing kids into computer science and really having that equity in mind while they do it. And mm -hmm. especially at the elementary level, that's the best thing you can do. Just be persistent and say, "This is for you. You can do this," and you need to just give it time because I think. I think this is some, computer science is something that anyone can do, no matter no matter what your level is. You just have to keep at it. Some people there are some people out there who just get it in five seconds, and mm -hmm. it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating as a person who takes a longer time to see that, and you're and you always have that feeling that maybe I'm not right for this because everyone else is so much better at it. But you have to you have to let them know that everyone takes their own pace and you can do it if you want to do it. Um, and I think for in terms of equal representation, we should, um, as a community, we should have better efforts in finding media that represent um, women mm -hmm. and underrepresented populations better. So if you're showing a video about um, math or science, maybe like just take a little more maybe click one more youtube video to see to find one to find one that you know includes girls some more or mm -hmm. just call it out yourself if you see a, if you see a computer science um, video or any type of media that you can see is biased towards um, a certain population you can call it out yourself and say hey mm -hmm. i know i know people in my life who don't look like this and they're very successful in computer science so don't take don't think that because you don't look like the people in the stereotype that this is wrong for you. Mm -hmm. That's true. It's a really good reminder. Um, to add on to that for the teachers on the call, um, one good resource for videos that um, is code.org is really doing a concerted effort to put out lots and lots of videos, um, both in what they use for some of their courses, but also just their um, like inspire CS videos and some of the things that they're doing um, to showcase like um, actual people in the field of computer science and they're really trying to broaden that um, the representation of what we see in media right um, to counter some of the um, you know white male images and videos and kind of what we all pops into our head our inherent bias around who can who does computer science so that's a good resource um, for teachers to look and even just showing those videos you know one a week or whatever just to um, you know make sure kids are seeing um, who other people are people that look like them um, are out in the field um, we had a couple comments in the chat window one was um, uh, let's see 
Um, it's a great reminder in the value of teachers modeling their own developmental curve, and I think that's something we've been as a cohort here in this computational thinking course, been on a journey um, around one, just our understanding of computational thinking, but then putting that into practice and learning scratch and learning some, um, you know, we even did some work with um, Lego and some, um, you know, robotics and building we do's and getting them to work and manipulating them and being transparent with our kids on our own developmental curve and really taking that opportunity to model um, for them as we're on this learning journey because it's, um, you know, we're in it for a year here. You know, we started in August and it goes through June and, you know, we're layering on what we're learning, but merely taking the time to make sure kids are seeing us in as learning in CS as well. Um, and it's uh, another comment in the chat window. Um, Gayatri, what is true for students is also true for teachers. We all sometimes feel imposter syndrome regarding CS as teachers, too. <laughs> And thank you for the encouragement to persist and work through it. Um, another question um, from Jay is, what is a resource you would suggest for students who want to do some of this work on their own? So I, yeah. practice. So practice problems and stuff like that. Um, I mean, there are just, I all you got to do is Google the language and pra practice problems, and there's, um, a whole bunch. Um, my favorite ones are um, are on coding bat, um, and but those are Java and Python. So mm -hmm. if you wanted anything else, um, I would have to look into that a little more. But mm -hmm. if you give me your email, I can email you a bunch. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, another uh, question. We we kind of talked a little bit about some of the inherent biases and kind of how to address that as teachers, but. What advice would you have for kindergarten through eighth grade teachers about preparing kids to take computer science courses in high school? So if we think about wanting, you know, even if students don't choose computer science as, you know, what they want to do in college or career or beyond high school, but this idea that what we want to do is give all kids a foundation um, so that they can be prepared and adequately feel like, oh, we can, we have the option. If we want, if I wanted to take AP computer science, I could because it's not going to be the first time I'm exposed to computer <laughs> science. So what would device would you have for us about preparing kids? About preparing kids. Um, I'd say if, if nothing else, emphasize the importance of logic and um, very logical thinking. Um, this is this is a tough one because computational thinking is so associated with computer science and sometimes you don't have the capacity to teach computer science in your classrooms. Um, I think a really good um, a really good thing to do is to is incorporate computer science and making models into what you're learning in class. For instance, um, you could use Scratch to actually model um, certain biological processes or certain certain things in physics, um, and that's those are the easy ones. Um, integrating computational thinking into science, it's a lot harder in uh, in English and history. But to just to just emphasize a systematic way of thinking, um, I know in English this is, in English it's looked down upon to be systematic in thought, but I mean, it's a good exercise. I think people should try, um, you know, especially in the middle, upper elementary, middle school levels, when you start analyzing text, to be able to look to look at it and say, this is what these are the steps that I go through. Um, first, I look through vocabulary. If I don't know a certain vocabulary word, here's where I go, and that's that's still computational thinking. That's still a very systematic, algorithmic way of thinking, um, even though you're doing other subjects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you. and I think just so basically thinking in a in a more complex and logical manner is the best preparation that you can have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Aside from aside from actually coding. Yeah. Right. Thank you. What are with your middle school students that you work with when we think about some of the dispositions associated with? Um, thinking computationally and, and computer science, um, 
what are some of the things that you noticed you those students need more support and one was the you you talked about was the belief in themselves that they can be good at computer science. It just takes some work and persistence and hard work. What are some of the other things you're noticing with those middle school kids that, from a disposition standpoint, that you really try and address or that you're noticing? Um, a lot of the a lot of the students that we get are very enthusiastic, mm -hmm. um, enthusiastic about it. So, other than the issue of not believing. I mean, not being confident in their skills. There's really, there's really nothing super remarkable um, that I'm noticing. But I, I think what, what I like is that they're very open to everything, mm -hmm. um, and what they, what they're really appreciating is that they can see computer science as more than robotics. Um, mm -hmm. They can, um, and I think what's nice is that we're presenting somewhat of a diversity just in the way computer science can be applied. Um, you know, a lot of them don't really know how to build their own website, and that's something that's interesting to them, and they didn't realize that that can be accomplished through code. Um, a lot of people really, a lot of people, you know, just like turning LEDs on and off with the Arduinos, and they didn't realize that that can be accomplished with um, code. And so I think what's really striking to them and what, what I've noticed is that they appreciate a diversity in application um, and knowing that computational thinking is more than just programming a robot and setting mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I think as we think more about like what does computer science look like in K-8, I think that we will expand and we have a long ways to go when we think about the maker physical computing um, machine learning, all of those things, and what that could look like um, at the elementary level or starting at the elementary level during the school day. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the things, um, I had an opportunity last week. We had an hour of code event here at the district office, and we had adults who work in the district office come and give um, coding a try. And um, we had four of your students that you work with from Highland come and be coding coaches uh, to those adults. And what really stood out to me was their ability to communicate, convey their ideas, and also coach people um, who have, you know, who had zero experience <laughs> and just starting on some very simple block-based coding. And one of the questions in the chat window is from Kathleen, and she's a kindergarten teacher. And um, her question is, how do you feel about students working across grade levels as coding coaches? Oh, I think that is awesome. Uh, I think that is a really good way to get more kids into computer science. And I especially love the four, the four kids that from Highland that came to you guys, they're awesome. Um, and they're actually a very representative population. I think there were three girls mm -hmm. and um, one boy, and they're all, they're all great kids. And I think that is super effective because mm -hmm. that is a very tangible person to look up to, um, mm -hmm. when, especially when teaching. And they're very, they're much more they much more understand the thinking process, especially at an elementary level. It is so hard for us as older people to know what, how they think at an elementary level, but they are much, much closer to um, understanding what kind of run-ins they're going to have. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any other questions from um, the participants on the call? I'll give you all a few moments. I actually do have an example of social science and computational um, thinking from back Great. to that one question. Um, there is a group of uh, there's a group called Black Girls Who Code, mm -hmm. and they actually used um, they crowdsourced data and they created a program to um, to actually track uh, shootings of um, you know shootings of unarmed. Um, unarmed people across the United States, and so they really applied computer science to you know social justice and things that they were um, passionate about. And so there's one of your intersections. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. 
Um, a question came up in the chat, Lundo. To what extent do you see computer science integrated in medicine in your internship at the University of Washington? Yeah, more and more um, each day. When I started my internship, I was just doing uh, wet lab work, which is basically what you would think of when you think of lab work, the bench, the white the, black, mm -hmm. the white coat and everything. Um, but now more and more I spend I spend my time in front of a computer. Um, you know, I do a lot of um, CAD, computer-aided design. Um, that involves a lot of code um, in designing certain, um, certain devices. And so uh, it's getting integrated more and more um, and in different ways. Um, I have been, at one point I was coding in um, Arduino, at another point I was doing some MATLAB stuff, um, at another I was doing computer-aided design, so um, CS is <laughs> actually basically taking over um, the work I do at UW. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very uh, important message that we've tried to amplify in our computer science initiative is really this is not just about computer science as its own discipline, but it's really um, essential in almost every discipline <laughs> and when we think about helping kids you know see that and and understand where some of the intersections are and we there's so many possibilities that will be coming up in the future that we don't even know exist so um, it's always great for us to as educators hear more examples of you know what what folks are interested in what what is happening as far as the intersection between computer science and other disciplines. Yeah. So I think we might have one more question coming. Let's see here. Before we, um, but we do really appreciate your time today and your expertise and I know for myself, and um, I really value being able to hear it from a student perspective. And as we think about, you know, you're a senior, but when we, you know, think about our kids now, it's not too far down the line that they'll be in high school and pursuing some of the similar topics that you are, and um, and even the inspiration that you provide for um, the middle school kids, and that's just around the corner for our kids. So. Um, one more question came up. What, suggest what suggestions do you have to encourage parental involvement in computer science with their children? Yeah, so this comes back to uh, last week. Highland had a family code night, um, and they just asked students to bring their um, families, and um, they had uh, different rooms you could go to. You could do Python. I was running an Arduino session. Um, another teacher was running a robotics session. Um, so that, that's a great way. Um, you know, even if it's just once or twice in a year, that's a great way to stay involved. Another is to just encourage um, encourage your kids um, to play around with Scratch, especially at the elementary level. Um, play around with Scratch, see what you can make. Tell them, give them little, give them little challenges. Like say, hey, make me a make me a game, make me a um, make me a card game, or make me a video of something. And I think just getting them started and keep, if you keep pushing them to do little challenges, they'll take it and run on their own. Mm -hmm. What do you see, you've mentioned Scratch um, a couple different times in our call, are there any other um, block-based uh, programs that you block see um, as a nice I'm, entry point for doing kind of some of the things you've been talking about? Mm -hmm. Scratch is my, I mean, Scratch is the go-to, but I know that Google has one made. I think it's called Made with Code. It's one of one of those things, and that one is actually oriented towards girls. It's um, it's I can't remember the um, I can't remember the the character. They have like Disney characters. It might be it might be Frozen oriented, um, but that's another block based. I know Google has a block based program that they that is also good. Um, other than that, I can't think of. I can't think of anything. I'm sure. I'm sure they're out there, but to me, Scratch is the go-to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we're all learning Scratch this year, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one more question. Another question came in. Um, have you come across integrated um, computer science work in subject areas? For example, in science, we are working on a blackout and how to solve this problem. 
are there curriculum that integrate math, science, and engineering? Engineering. Integrated CS work and subject. Um, so far in my in my education, um, I haven't. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not even totally sure what's out there. Mm -hmm. I think the best way to do it is problem pro problem slash project based learning. Um, and so I see this a lot in the in kind of the middle school physics classes where you have a challenge. You're either building a boat or you're um, building a boat or a mousetrap car, one of those things. And I think a good way to start integrating code with that is instead of hand drawing your blueprints, you create a 3D model, um, 3D model of it um, on programs. And there are programs installed on all the district computers that make that really easy. And I think that's a good entry point to coding um, because those are definitely along the lines of computational thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great, thank you. Um, what do you see, this question comes from Greg, what do you see as a good stepping stone from scratch to line-based coding? Because um, we are starting to, we have uh, teachers in our K-5 um, computer science pilots and starting in fourth grade using scratch um, with kids to build models and learn, you know, they're also develop their discrete skills within scratch. Um, so the stepping stone, and is there a particular language you see as a good next step? To me, um, Python is the best um, is the best next step. Um, I think it's the it's the it's pretty high level, so you don't have to do a lot of the um, you don't have to initialize a lot of variables, um, and you don't have to deal with a lot of things that you're perhaps not ready to deal with, um, especially when you're moving from scratch. Um, and so I think Python is the best because it's much more coder friendly um, or much more beginner friendly um, as a language. So I, that's the best um, language, and that is the most similar to scratch. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If we will give about 30 more seconds, if there's any um, last questions that you'd like to ask. After. Well, thank you again for joining us, and we have um, just a couple other topics we're going to talk about while we're all here together on our Skype call, um, but I know I'd like to extend a thank you to um, Gayatri for your time and your expertise and also your commitment to um, computer science and giving back to our immediate community and being attentive to um, how we can really engage more kids and, um, and in a really meaningful and authentic way, and also to help us advance our understanding as educators. I think it's imperative that we listen to students and kids and really think deeply about um, you know, how we're uh, really preparing them in a really relevant engaging way. So um, we really appreciate your time and um, you're an amazing woman and we just can't wait to see what you continue to do. <laughs> um, thank you. Very inspirational. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you to all the teachers here. You guys are doing things that I would have never imagined I would have in elementary school. So <laughs> you're giving your you're giving your students a great, great start. <laughs> so thank you so much. The last time we met on our uh, online session, we talked a little. We had a just a few minutes to look at the K-12 computer science framework and um, just had an overview of that. And this session, we want to talk about um, the computer science, the interim CSTA um, computer science standard. So a little bit of background, in August of 2015, House Bill, the Washington State House Bill 1813 directed um, OSPI to adopt computer science K-12 learning standards. So beginning in the 2015-16 school year, OSPI engaged um, educators, a team of educators and stakeholders in a process to review and then come up with a recommendation to adopt a set of computer learning, uh, computer science learning standards. And the point there was to really um, draw upon a nationally recognized CS um, set of standards. So on December 8th, just last week, 
uh, the Washington Superintendent of Public Instruction, Randy Doran, signed in the new standards, um, putting them into effect in our state. So I'm going to put into the chat window a link that I want you all to, yeah. oops, sorry, let's see, there we go, that I want you all to click on and go ahead and click on that link and then um, download, you know, open the PDF and um, go ahead and save that somewhere for your future reference. So I'll give you a few moments. Then to provide you just an overview of the CSTA standards, the next thing I'm going to do is actually copy and paste into the chat window. I'll put a link in the chat window here that will take you to a YouTube video that really, it's just a couple minutes long, but what it, and I want you to click into it and take uh, the couple minutes to watch it. And what it, um, is explain, it's explaining the, um, the goal and the purpose of the CSTA standards. So um, I will give you a few moments to go ahead and look at that video. I advancing that um, wants you to read through the standards and take a look at your grade band. Um, maybe just look at through a hand, you know, like one page of the standards that correlate to your grade band and really in the chat window type some uh, some ideas on where you see connections to the computational thinking concepts that you're currently teaching. So what is affirming to you that you see in the standards? Great, thank you everyone. So the purpose of taking a look at the standards and bringing this to the forefront today. One was to let you know that our state um, just recently adopted this, um, or yeah, adopted this set of standards more officially, or actually officially. And then the second thing is to just dip our toe into connecting with the standards, some of the things that are gonna look familiar to us as we've been exploring in our computational thinking course, and then some that we're really thinking, wow, I need to digest that more. I need to have more conversations about what does that look like? Um, how do we accomplish that um, in our particular grade levels? So um, 